So this talk is on, uh, yeah, let me start my torch. So this talk is on um, primal dual methods for uh, convex concave saddle point problems, and this is a joint work with uh, my PhD student Erfan, and some part of it uh, is uh, with Uday Shandak. I'll okay, so, um, so um, yeah, the motivation is, uh, so in this talk I'm, uh, so the saddle point problems uh, arises uh, in many, naturally arises in many settings, like uh, constraint optimization problems or uh, two-player zero-sum games. So this, uh, as you know, motivated the interest in designing effective methods to solve these problems. So my focus in this one is uh, a general coupling term. So I'll not be assuming uh, lambda to be a bilinear function. Um, and um, so with that thing, then I can get uh, nonlinear conic constraints or maybe the payoff function that is not bilinear. And um, OK, OK, a little louder, OK. Then um, another thing could be um, uh, the thing that I'm looking at is like when 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 the uh, the primal variable has block coordinates. So the application there, tons of applications. So uh, like the distance metric learning or uh, ellipsoidal machines or game theory, they all have this like nonlinear structure there, not bilinear. So um, the problem setup is uh, so both x and y they are finite dimensional uh, norm vector spaces. They are arbitrary norms, norms is uh, x norm and y norm. And here the problem uh, we'll be looking at is minimize x, maximize y uh, over this uh, function. So here the assumptions are, uh, so the f is convex, possibly non-smooth, and the modulus is, it, it, it can be uh, strongly convex or not, but this is with respect to this uh, norm. And uh, h is convex, again, possibly non-smooth, um, and this phi function, uh, so it is general convex and concave in y. And uh, we'll be making some differentiability assumptions on uh, this phi function. So, uh, so the first thing is uh, this function is uh, the partial gradient with respect to x is Lipschitz continuous uh, with constant LXX. And this can be 0 if it is uh, linear in x. Uh, and partial gradient with respect to y uh, is Lipschitz. And here, uh, we assume that this term is strictly positive so that the problem becomes interesting. Otherwise, uh, there is no coupling, right? So um, later, we can also remove this assumption, okay? So which means the phi may not be overall differentiable, okay? Um, okay. So a generic example uh, is like the following uh, conic constraint convex optimization problem. Uh, here, f is convex. And g is, uh, g is a convex function with a Lipschitz continuous gradient. And let's say this g uh, is k-convex Lipschitz function. And let's say this, this, this denotes the Jacobian, and the Jacobian is also Lipschitz. Okay. So here, uh, using the Lagrangian duality, uh, we can write the problem of this form. right? So these type of problems, uh, they give us a specific settle point problem where this coupling function is linear in the dual, right? always. Um, then, um, okay, so this LXX, LYX, and LYY takes the following form, right? So here, uh, it, so this, this, this set, so let's say we know a bound on the optimal dual, okay? If we know a bound on the optimal dual, then uh, we can write, so this bound on the optimal dual comes here, okay? So this LYX is the Lipschitz constant of G. And LYY is zero because it's uh, linear. Okay, so anyway, um, so I'll come back to this later, okay? So how do we come up with a bound on the optimal dual? Um, so the other variant that I'll be looking at is, uh, let's say the, the, the problem is large scale in the sense that there are, uh, the x, dimension of x is very large, then let's say you, uh, uh, you, you, you have block coordinates in x, and then we assume that this f has a uh, separable form, and so again, we don't assume anything on uh, just being uh, convex concave, okay? So, um, so the, uh, in these problems, of course, we need some, something like coordinate frame structure. So in the sense that the partial gradients with respect to xi coordinate uh, should be one over m work of uh, computing the whole gradient. 
So otherwise, if I need to compute the whole gradient to compute this, then it's, of course, meaningless. Okay, I can use the whole gradient. Um, but there are many problems like that uh, that satisfies this kind of thing. Okay, so let me briefly talk about uh, what has been done. So for the case that this, this phi is bilinear, uh, the problems of this form, and uh, a linear convergence rate has been shown. Uh, Chen, Rockefeller, and Shambol, um, and uh, Polk in 11, they show that when F and H strongly convex, and you use Prox operations, then you get linear rate. And in the other results, uh, you don't need to assume H strongly convex, but then it, it comes uh, with like sm some smoothness assumptions. Okay? Then uh, again, you can get uh, linear rates. But so these, these, these assumptions are not practical in our setting because uh, so these linear rates doesn't mean it, it doesn't, uh, as far as I know, doesn't extend when uh, phi is not bilinear because you use like the um, uh, fan shield tool to get these uh, results, linear, linear convergence rates. Are. So when phi is not bilinear, so linear rates doesn't go through. And, uh, and the other thing is that th the problems that I mentioned, this H function is usually support or indicator function, which is not, may not be strongly convex or uh, smooth okay, in general. So therefore, uh, we'll be focusing on the sublinear rate case. In the sublinear rate case, again, for when phi is bilinear, uh, Shambol Polk uh, in 16 and 11 uh, uh, had this like algorithm, uh, which, is, which can be seen as like maybe accelerated arrow Hurwitz method. And uh, so uh, it has one over k ergodic rate for the Lagrangian uh, evaluation. And the rate improves to one over k square when uh, f is strongly convex. Okay. Then, um, so this is a single loop algorithm, just uh, one, one, there's one loop. Uh, and then later, uh, Ham Montero, uh, they produced, uh, they, they come up with this inexact proximal point method. So this is a, a two loop method. Uh, you can see it as like a, a, a exactly, proximal point method, inexact. So the outer problem is as prox sub inclusions. And to solve each of these problems, inner uh, iterations, Nestor's uh, accelerated method. Um, and there's, uh, other whole bunch of work uh, by Nemrowski and Juditsky and later uh, 15 paper. And, but uh, let, me, let me tell you the things uh, that we'll be improving later. So, uh, so the first of all, in both uh, uh, Montero's paper and then the, all these work, uh, so we need to assume that the primal dual domains are bounded. Okay. And uh, the other thing is that uh, Nestor assumes, uh, uh, Nemrowski assumes that, uh, so the whole function is uh, uh, differentiable with a Lipschitz constant L. So this L determines the both the primal and the dual step sizes. And uh, this uh, requires twice computation. So since this is um, a mirror prox algorithm, so it requires twice computation of the gradient and a projection onto uh, the primal dual step. Okay, so if both X and Y are compact, so this is, I, I think, a, a restricted uh, assumption. So then you get one over K ergodic rate. And if uh, phi is strongly convex in X and linear in Y, and Y compact, then you get one over K square rate. Uh, in, in the 15 work, then later XM this composite structure. But this, this method doesn't exploit the strong convex. So, um, okay. Oh, there is another, uh, other, other works as well, okay. Uh, so Kolosowski and Montero then later remove uh, the whole differentiable assumption if they replace the stronger uh, oracle. So they they assume they need to solve this type of problem, which may not be easy, but uh, later we'll be assuming we'll be solving this kind of problem. Okay. Anyway, and then uh, Kolosowski and Monterey, they again assume bounded domain and uh, they have a limit point result. Uh, so any accumulation point is a settled point. Okay. So, um, yeah, it goes. And for the block coordinate case, uh, Shambol uh, has a recent paper with uh, Peter Richterich. And, uh, but here, the key thing I should mention is that they assume that the phi function is both bilinear and separable in the uh, primal coordinates. Then they get uh, one over k and k squared. So in this uh, talk, I'll be uh, talking about what if uh, this is not bilinear and it may not be separable in the primal coordinates, okay? We'll be recovering similar rates. Okay, um, so again, let me remind you the problem setup. Uh, uh, so F convex, H convex, F can be strongly convex. Uh, I'll denote it later. And then we have this 
partial uh, gradient, the Lipschitz continuity assumptions on partial gradient. Uh, okay, so the algorithm is like is an extension of shambhal poke algorithm. Uh, the, 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 the the thing is like they generalize it in the sense that uh, so shambhal poke does this extrapolation step on the uh, primal iterates here, but instead we do the uh, extrapolation on the partial gradients with respect to y. And in fact, if the problem is bilinear, so this algorithm reduces the shambhal poke uh, algorithm. And uh, the other thing here is that now we also do this linearization, okay? So we'll be, we'll be using Bregman distance functions. Uh, we'll be assuming that these, uh, the defining functions uh, of these Bregman functions are strongly convex with respect to these norms, okay? One strongly convex. Okay, so this, we, we come up with some uh, step size selection rules. And uh, so this, Tau k and sigma k, they are uh, primal and dual step sizes, and theta k is the momentum uh, step size. So in order to choose uh, a sequence that is valid, uh, tau k, sigma k, and theta k, you need to come up with, you need to find some alpha k and beta k sequence that satisfies uh, these conditions. So, um, so the Schumbel-Fock step size also becomes a special case of uh, the step size condition rule. So, one thing uh, I need to mention is that similar to Kolosowski and Montero, uh, what we can do is that we can remove this assumption if we can replace this step instead of using the uh, linearization. If this step is replaced by this, then uh, this assumption can be removed. And if this assumption removed, then uh, uh, which means like this the whole thing may not exist or even if they exist, like the, uh, the partial gradient with respect to uh, X may not be Lipschitz. An example to this is like so something like this. So uh, here, uh, even though it is differentiable, but partial gradient with respect to X doesn't exist because Y is unbound. Uh, so therefore, all these methods like uh, the Nemirovsky's or, uh, or maybe the uh, Montero's methods, like Nemirovsky's method, they, they, they may not be applied on this thing. Okay, uh, okay so. Uh, the rate result, um, the rate result is uh, here. So for uh, convex setting, uh, you use uh, constant uh, steps, and uh, theta k, the uh, momentum uh, term is one. So this is this is exactly shambhal uh, poke. But when uh, this uh, dual step c uh, is between zero and one, then the actual sequence converges. When, uh, if, uh, and for any value between zero and one, then you get ergodic convergence rate of one over k. And um, for the strongly convex case, then we assume linearity uh, in terms of the dual variable and strongly convex f. In that case, then the step size rule in shambhal uh if you use the same step size rule, but with a little bit maybe different uh, initialization, then, uh, then you get one over k square rate result. And what is what is cru what will be crucial later is that so okay the reason you get this is that the sigma k will be an incre uh, order of k sequence theta k sequence. So this is why you get one over k square. And uh, tau k the primal step size will be uh, uh, theta one over k type of sequence. But what is crucial here is that if you take c between zero one, then you get boundedness of the dual variables. Okay, uh, that will be that will be crucial later uh, when we look at the constraint optimization problems. Uh, here we cannot say anything about the convergence of the duals. The duals might wander around, but what we know is that the dual iterates will be bound if if, z, uh, if c is selected between zero and one. Okay, so uh, in the proof, yeah, this is just a little bit uh, proof sketch. So you use the this, uh, three point. Uh, property of the Bregman distance function. And like uh, you, you need, uh, we, we, you write a recursion of this form like at the k iterate. Oh, I, I, maybe I forgot to say, when, whenever you say bar, these are ergodic iterates. Okay. Uh, so you get qk, pk, and then, so this is of the same, uh, uh, the, the, it's almost like this is, this is an extension of shambhal poke so when you multiply this thing by tk, tk is like a uh, sequence that is positive, then you need to require something like this. If you require a condition like this, 
then you get a telescopic sum. And this condition indeed gives us these step size rules, okay? uh, this, this requirement. And then, uh, then you can cancel uh, the terms and then use Jensen's inequality and then you get the, uh, you get the rates. Okay. Um, okay, so for the um, uh, randomized uh, block coordinate version, uh, so what we're going to do is that now we have, uh, we, we, we have similar assumptions, but the assumption is now the same assumption on y for, uh, for partial gradient with respect to y, but for uh, x terms, then we assume uh, blockwise uh, Lipschitz, okay? So here I only change the uh, xi variable, and then you get a L x, xi, xi denotes that Lipschitz. Okay. So, uh, okay, so the algorithm is almost the same. Uh, uh, it, it, this generalizes the, um, the new algorithm by uh, Peter and Chambol. Uh, and he, uh, okay, so this M, the number of terms, uh, comes up here. Uh, so you have, again, the same extrapolation with respect to partial gradients Y. And uh, so the dual step is same other than this S term. But uh, in, in for updating X, you uh, ran uniform, this is, you, this is important, uniformly at random you pick a uh, block coordinate and then you update that coordinate. Okay, now um, when M is equal to one, all those previous results are recovered here. Uh, the constants and everything will be the same. So in fact, these step size rules uh, includes the previous step size rules that I mentioned. Um, and the results for this is, so again, uh, you, you initialize tau i zero and sigma like this. So there are, uh, you use constants in those definitions. But what you can do is that, again, this c plays a role. If this c is between zero and one, then the actual sequences uh, almost surely converges to a settle point. And at the same time, uh, it also converges in the mean square uh, sense. Okay. These are the actual sequences. And if C is between 0, 1, including 1, then uh, you get, now the expectation comes because of this randomization, then uh, you get you get these uh, 1 over K rate, ergodic rate. And uh, so again, when if you set M is equal to 1, so you see this term drops, you get 1, this term drops, and then you get exactly the previous deterministic algorithm rates. Um, okay, so by the way, so the, the point that we converge is not a uh, deterministic point. It may, it may be a, ran it's, it's a random point. So it, it means every, um, every realization converges to a uh, primal dual point. Okay, so for the strongly convex setting, uh, then there are some step size rules. Uh, and then you get, uh, you get expectation of xk, so this is the actual sequence, minus x star square, so this is now uh, one over k square. And in fact, so if we, if, we, uh, if we make a little bit stronger assumption, which means a little bit similar to uh, Chambol and uh, Peter's recent work, but again, we don't assume bilinearity, but this time we assume uh, separable structure on x size, then instead of using uniform uh, distribution, you can use arbitrary positive probabilities. You can sample with arbitrary positive probabilities. Um, yeah, the, the, proof is, the proof is similar uh, to the previous case, but then um, here uh, we use uh, Robinson Sigmund's uh, super martingale to show the um, convergence results. Okay, so as I said, uh, so this analysis extends uh, this type of uh, coupling functions to general convex concave and non-separable uh, in X. Um, now, if you come back to the, um, no, I have time. I'm, maybe I'm going fast. If you come back to convex optimization with uh, nonlinear constraints, so um, so remember, uh, uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning that this LXX includes a bound on the dual here. So one way to resolve uh, this issue is that if you assume a Slater point given to this problem, 
then uh, I'm going to talk briefly in a moment. Then you can get a, uh, by solving a convex optimization problem, you can get a bound on the dual. And um, then if you know such a, such a bound, then you use the algorithm and then you get, you get a result something like this. So you can bound suboptimality of the ergodic sequence. And this d, d minus k, it is the distance to con, okay? So I'm, uh, this is like measures the uh, infeasibility. So infeasibility of the ergodic iterates, uh, they, they, they uh, diminish by one over k rate, okay? And in fact, if, uh, if this row function, if this, if this function is strongly convex, then uh, you get one over k square rate uh, for the uh, suboptimality and infeasibility. And in terms of like the actual sequence, then you get, in norm, you get one over k. So this rate uh, is, is, is the optimal rate for this uh, setting. Um, yeah. So now let me, let me uh, briefly talk about the settle point thing here. So uh, think about the problem. Rho x minimize rho x uh, subject to gx in the minus k con. So if you are given a settled point, uh, if, you, if you are given a Slater point, let's say uh, x, so here q, q is the dual function, okay, dual function of this problem. And when I, when I say capital Q y bar, uh, it is the super level, uh, super level set of the uh, dual function, okay. If, if a Slater point uh, is given x bar, x, and g x bar is in the interior of minus k, then uh, the super level set uh, is bounded. And so in, in, in a sense, this is an extension of Uzawa's previous result for conic setting. It, it is of this form, uh, rho, the primal objective function evaluated x bar and the dual objective function y bar divided by r, r, r star. And r star is, can be found by solving this problem, but note that this problem, this is the two norm. This is a non-convex problem but you can get a, a lower bound, R tilde, that can be uh, by solving a, a convex optimization problem. So since if, if, you're given a, if you're given a point a G, a x bar such that this is true, then, uh, then you can get a, a upper bound on the optimal duals, okay? So this is what I was referring to here. And you can get some B, okay, by solving a convex optimization problem, okay? Um, Okay, um, yeah, so if, 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 if the cone is like a positive ortent, then this, uh, this R star is the minimum of D, so this is by Uzawa's result, okay, so. Uh, okay, so, okay, now, if, if it turns out that, now this is, uh, maybe this might be interesting, if it turns out that dual bound is not available, or it might be the case that dual uh, solution set may be unbounded, okay, there might not be a bound, uh, then in that case, uh, what, what, what we can show is something like this. For any uh, lambda and c between 0, 1, and choose b sufficiently large, okay? So you can choose sufficiently large uh, uh, satisfying this, uh, this thing because this is in the square root and this is linear here. But who knows these constants, okay? These constants are not known, but you know that you can choose, if, if b is sufficiently large, then this is satisfied. Then this b comes up here, so which means you don't do something to the dual, but even if the, even if the problem uh, in terms of optimal dual, so dual solution set is unbounded, if you choose sufficiently small uh, primal step, then the, uh, the dual iterates stay bounded in the algorithm. The trajectory stay bounded. So therefore, all the rates continue to hold, okay? Um, yeah, I, I, I'll be talking a little bit about the uh, numerical experiment. So we implemented uh, this method for uh, kernel metrics learning problem. So uh, we looked at the uh, both L1, uh, like L1 soft norm and uh, L2 norm uh, soft margin problems. Uh, but here I am just like reporting the results of L2 because you get strong convex here, then you can uh, see how, how, how the behavior of the algorithm is different. So this problem is, so if you, if you forget about this max term, so if you just focus on the in, 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 inner problem, this is an SVM problem. Okay. So uh, this 
uh, this, this, this formulation is proposed by Lankry. And uh, so this is, you wanna, let's say, you wanna learn uh, a kernel metrics, okay? Uh, that explains the data well, okay? Um, so, and then you have a class of kernel functions, let's say, matrices. And in this case, we, 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 we use, uh, let's say we have some uh, already known, some kernel matrices, let's say polynomial or exponential, some Gaussian matrices, and you wanna learn, a com uh, like you wanna learn how to combine them to explain the data, okay? So then uh, this problem, I uh, mean max problem, becomes uh, of this form. And now this is linear in Y, but it is nonlinear in X, okay? So it is not bilinear, and the, the other uh, saddle point uh, uh, primal dual algorithms cannot use this, uh, solve this, unless it is uh, written uh, maybe in the conic structure, okay? Anyway, so, yes. Um, Okay, so yeah, let me tell you, uh, let me show you how the uh, algorithms behave. So, so the blue one, the blue one is the unaccelerated one. The red one uh, is the accelerated one, the uh, using the strong convexity. And the yellow one, we do restarts, okay, after after cer every after every certain iterations. And the the purple one is the mirror probes. Uh, so these axes, they're uh, le relative uh, uh, error of the um, uh, uh, saddle point function. Uh, yeah, all of them are. So, so these are iterations. You see, like uh, when when you when you do restarts, uh, you get you get very fast convergence. Okay. Uh, but you see, if you don't do restarts. Uh, then the accelerated one eventually uh, comes closer to the uh, unaccelerated one. The reason is because the unaccelerated one uses constant step sizes, but the accelerated one, uh, the dual step size goes to infinity and the primal step size goes to zero. So therefore, the behavior starts stagnating, okay? But as a remedy, if you do restarts, then uh, you keep continue getting a good result. So this behavior has been observed for uh, primal algorithms also before. Uh, so this is for the uh, this is for the actual relative error of the actual sequence. Then you also get a similar behavior. So these are different problems, different real, uh, real problems. Okay. So uh, yeah, as I said, the purple ones are the uh, mirror probes. So and um, all those algorithms that I uh, plots that I showed was uh, for the deterministic one. And uh, so we also implemented for the um, randomized block coordinate one. So th this one is, 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 is one block deterministic uh, uh, setting. And this one uh, here I talk about uh, the randomized one. Uh, so the, this, this uh, blue and uh, this green one uh, is STPD3. And the, uh, this light blue one is Sedumi, okay? So of course, eventually they beat uh, but then, you know, since these are, are the, the things that I described as the first order methods, so we know for uh, small to medium accuracy, they should behave well uh, compared to uh, uh, off the shelf, uh, these interior point methods. So this is, as I said, this is the deterministic one. So this is with, uh, this is the accelerated one, and this is accelerated with restart. So it behaves well. So the purple one is mirror probes, and this is without acceleration. And here, the randomized one, uh, the randomized one, uh, yeah, this R, RAPD1 and RAPD2. So in the randomized one, uh, so the acceleration doesn't seem to be effect, uh, affecting much. But yeah, so these are the uh, results. And this is again mirror probes, and these are the uh, prime um, interior point methods. So yeah, so these are, uh, these are the references for the work. Thank you.